Um, <clears throat> the last uh, few weeks of the, the class, last, yeah, three weeks, uh, we don't have a particular textbook or anything. We're talking about, uh, we're getting some advice from a variety of people, as we just did. Um, and, uh, of course, it's going to be important that you watch the videos and that you take down some notes. And you can probably figure out, for example, from this video, what am I likely to ask? Well, I might ask uh, something like, uh, what did Bo Warren Buffett suggest? Uh, he suggested, you know, don't sleep, walk through life. Find, find something you're passionate about, something you would do if you didn't have to work, uh, sort, of, sort of suggestion, for example. Uh, or uh, the fairly long story by Will Smith, you know, that uh, live life without fear. And, and he went on to say the best things in life are on the other side of fear that we tend to uh, get fearful of making something, you know, doing something dynamic in our life, whether it's jumping out of an airplane or, or you know, starting a business. Uh, our fears are coming before we actually do it. Uh, and and uh, there's a, another a, a gal, I'm not sure if we already listened to her, hers or not, but there's a psychologist that uh, if we haven't listened to, we're going to, who says actually that's a, a problem with our brain. <laughs> Our brains have been wired to keep us from pain. And so most people um, are stalled by fear. And so she kind of amplifies on what Will Smith was saying, is that we are afraid of, of, any, of the unknown, first off. And so anything that you're not sure about, whether it be starting a business or uh, you know, whatever, going to Malaysia to school, I don't know, uh, anything that you're not sure about, you tend to be fearful of and your fear becomes greatest actually before you do it um, as Will Smith was talking about and so we get scared 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 and what happens to a lot of people they don't make a decision at all then they, they stall they go Psh. in case of Will Smith he was saying he, he kind of got himself back into a corner which by the way that's also a psychological trick is if you have goals you tell people everybody about your goals and then, and you even ask for them to remind you, and to hold you to it, uh, because then, like Will Smith and all of his buddies that were out drunk the night before, now you feel committed to it, uh, and you're afraid to say you're afraid not to do it, because now you're afraid that somebody's going to think badly of you if you don't do what you told them you're going to do, and so you can actually reverse it now, and you can get something that you're more afraid of, or that you're at least equally afraid of, or whatever, and so now you're afraid that somebody's going to talk, call you, uh, you know, a scaredy cat or a wimp or whatever they're going to call you. And so now you have to go through with it because you've told all these people that you're going to do whatever it is, X, Y, or Z. Um, but our brains are wired to, to make us hesitate and to pause and to uh, procrastinate and to not do what we know we should do. Uh, as you recall, uh, you know, Stephen Covey, again, going back to his, you know, that second quadrant. The second quadrant is that stuff that, you know, we ask ourselves, what, what could I be doing that would totally change my life if I were to do it consistently? If I were to set this goal and do it, what? what? Anyway, um, so those are the things uh, that we've learned from that verse, first video. Uh, you can imagine then that other question that, you know, I basically told you what things to think about for this video, and most of the videos here that you're assigned to watch this week are of that nature. You know, they have, you know, 10, 10 most important things according to this guy and 10 most important things according to that guy. So the hard part is going to be remember, who's, remember who said what. Um, but write down those things that they thought were important and remember who said them. And you should do real well on, on the quiz, on the participation quiz, and later when we have our quarterly quiz, uh, you should be fine. Um, okay, somebody have a presentation today? Who's up? Okay, come on up. Uh, good morning, Dr. Ken and my classmates. Today, me and my team going to talk about writing for the classes. The first one we should know is what is academic writing. Academic writing refers to writing produced in a college environment. Often this is writing that responds to other writing, to the ideas or 
controversies that you are really read about. Well, this definition sounds simple. Academic writing may be very different from the types of writing you have done in the past. Often, college students begin to understand what academic writing really means only after they receive negative feedback on their work. To become a strong writer in a college, you need to achieve a clear sense of two things: the academic environment and the kinds of writing you be doing in the environment. And because of the environment change, the what we got writing is changed too. So this is is diff difference between the high school and the college writing. Just many high school English instructor focus on specific, limited goals. For example, they may teach the five graphic essay as a right way to organize a paper because they want to give every student some ideas of essay's basic structure. A few teacher in other courses give much feedback on students' writing. May not, may do not even assign writing, and the college is different. On college background involved literature and literary, and literary analysis. College instructor may design their courses in a unique ways, and they may teach about the specialized, specialized subjects. For all these reasons, college instructors are much more like than high school teachers to assign writing, respond in detail to student writing. And ask questions that cannot be dealt with easily in a fixed form like the five graphic essay. And this is the this one is a basic five paragraph essay graphic organizer like the high school week on the field. And this this one is the colleague essay. And next part is the, what the kind of paper are commonly assigned in colleague classes. Uh, if we want to write a class, the first when you first get a writing assignment, pay attention to first the keyword for how to approach the writing. This will also suggest how you may structure and develop your paper. Look for the terms like this assignment. The first one, summarize to resist in your own words the main points or points that another works. The second, define to describe, explore, or characterize a keyword idea. Or phenomenon. Second, the third is uh, classify to group individual items by their shared characteristic, spread it from other groups of items, and next is compare and contrast to explore the significant likeness and the differences between two or more subjects. And next is uh, analyze to group to break something. A phenomenon or an idea into its part and explain how those parts fit or work together, and then argue to state a claim and support it with reason and evidence. And the last one, synthesize to pull together varied pieces or ideas from two or more sources. And then, when you want to uh, develop uh, essays, you should know how you, sh what you should do, and. How you sh what type of essay you should develop, and this you gonna know what you should do and why and how you should do. And the what question usually promotes the writing of the summaries, definition, classification, and sometimes compare and contrast essays. For example, what does John see the as many ele elements of Hulon's populist appeal? And and why and how question typically promote uh, analysis, argument, and synthesize ISIS. For example, why did Hulon's brand of populism gain force so quickly? And why did the solution respond the way it did to heat? And then there is an example of the developed uh, assignment. You gonna question yourself this question, you gonna ask yourself these questions. If you faced, if you want to discuss their perspective on religion of Russell, Bessem, and Marx, paper should be four or five pages in length. Faced with an assignment like this, you could ask about the scope of the assignment. The first, you should ask yourself which of the assigned reading should I concentrate on, and then should I read other works by these others that haven't been assigned in class, and should I do research to see. What scholars think about the way these 
philosophies well religion and do you want me to pay equal attention to each of the three philosophies and you can also ask about the approach the instructor would like you to take you can use the keywords the instructor may not have used in assignment and should i summarize the position of these three thinkers or should i compare and construct it well and do you want me to argue a specific point about the way this philosophy approach religion and would it be okay if i classified the way this philosophy think about religion and uh, this some um, these are some simple revision questions about the uh, above parts first what kind of writing have you pr practiced most in your recent past the answer is the paragraph per paragraph essays and the second question is name two things that make academic writing in college different from writing in high school and the answer is i sign writing form or essay and feedback about detail and first the last question is the explain how the words what ask for different kind of paper than the word why the word ask you focus on the summaries definition and the classification and sometimes compare and construct as it and why more focus on analysis argument and synthesis as it good morning everyone Students are usually required to take at least one writing course in their first year of college. If you approach your writing course merely as another hoop you need to jump through, you may miss on, on the main message. Writing is vital to your academic success at every step toward your degree. Um, then, maybe you will ask yourself what do instructors really want? Some instructors may say they have no particular expectations for student papers. This is partly true, but in other ways, college instructors do have expectations, and it's important to understand them. Most college instructors expect certain characteristics in student writing. Here are general no principles you should follow when writing essays or student papers. 1. Title the paper to identify your topic. Your little show, your title show prepare you, your reader for what your paper is about or what you will argue. Don't make your title the same as the title of a work you are writing about. Instead, be sure your title signals an aspect of the work you are focused on. Two, adjust the term of the of the assignment. Pay particular attention to what's in the assignment that signals a preferred approach. If you need to argue a point, be sure to make a statement that actually express your idea about the topic. Then follow that statement with your reasons and the evidence in support of the statement. 3. In your introduction, define your topic and establish your approach or sense of purpose. Define your topic and establish your Approach or sense of purpose. Think of your introduction as an extension of, of your title. Instructor appreciate at failing already by a clear opening. Four, build from a thesis or a clear state sense of purpose. To do that, you generally start with a statement that seeks to be support and built from there. Your thesis is that statement. It is a guiding section from the paper. Be clear in your own mind of the difference between your topic and your thesis. The topic is what your paper is about. The thesis is what you argue about the topic. 5. Develop, develop ideas patiently. The more you really dig out, dig into your topic, the more time you spend thinking about the specific of what you really want to argue and developing specific examples and reasons for your argument, the more developed your paper will be. It will also be much more interesting to your instructor as a, as a reader. 6. Integrate. Do not just plug in.
quotations, graphs, and illustrations. Remember that a quotation, graph, or illustrations does not make a point for you. You make the point first and then use such material to help back it up. Make sure the reader understands why you are using it and how it fits in at that place in your presentation. Build clear transitions at the beginning of every paragraph to link from one idea to another. A good paper is more than a list of good ideas. It should also know how the ideas fit together. Think of the first sentence in any paragraph as a kind of bridge for the reader from what came before. Document your sources appropriately. If your paper involves research of any kind, indicate clearly the use you make of outside sources. Care for research and the thoughtful application of the ideas and evidence of others is part of what college instructors values. Carefully edit your paper. It may not seem fair to make a harsh judgment about your serious list based on little errors, but in all writing, impressions count, since it is often hard to find small errors in our own writing. Always print out a draft well before you need to turn it in. Ask a classmates or friends to review it and mark any words or sentence that seems off in any way. Finally, turn in a clean hard copy. Most instructors want a paper copy and most definitely do not want to do the printing themselves. Present your paper in a professional way, using a staple or paper clip on the laptop to on the pages together, unless the instructor specify otherwise. Then, the writing process. Writing instructors distinguish between process and product. The exportations described here all involve the product you turn in on the due date. Although you should keep in mind what your product will look like, writing is more involved with how you get to let go. Process concerns how you go to actually write a paper. What do you actually do to get started? How do you organize your idea? Why do you make changes along the way as you write? Thinking of writing as a process is important because writing is actually a complex activity. Even professional writers rarely sit down at a keyboard and write out an article beginning to end without stopping along the way to revise the portions they have drafted to move ideas around or to revise their opening and the thesis. Professionals and students alike often say they only realize what they wanted to say after they started to write. This is why many instructors see writing as a way to learn. Then, how can I make the process work for me? No single set of steps automatically works best for everyone when writing a paper. Your job is try out ways that your instructor suggests and discover what works for you. And uh, that's where you need to figure out what works best for you because writing is hard. Procrastination is easy. Don't let yourself put off the task. Try the following to get started. 1. Discuss what you read, see and hear. Talking with others about your idea is a good way to begin a uh, achieve clarity. To use a use email to carry on discussion in writing. An email exchange with a classmate or your instructors might be the first step toward putting words on a page. Three brainstorm. Draw, draw down your thoughts as they come to mind. Just write a read. No worrying at first about how lost ideas fit together. For keep a journal in which you respond to your ass assigned readings. Set aside 20 minutes or also three times a week to summarize important thesis. 5. Ask and respond in writing to what, why, and how questions. Good questions promote productive writing sections. All of these steps, all of these steps and actions so far are pre-writing actions. 
This pre-writing step helps you get going in the right direction. Once you are ready to get start drafting your essay, keep moving forward in these ways. In your notes, respond directly to what others have written or said about a topic you are interested in. Write a short statement of intent or outline your paper before your first draft. Once you start writing, you may discover a lead for changes in the subject or order of things in your essay. Write down on a card or a separate sheet of paper what you see as your paper's main point of thesis. As you draft your essay, look back at lab thesis statement, revise and as lead it and move forward. Revise outline your paper. Many writers find that outline what they have already written in a draft helps them see more clearly how their ideas fit or do not fit together. Do, don't observe all the details when writing a draft. Remember, you have time for revising and editing later on. Finally, read your draft aloud. Hearing your own writing often helps you see it more plainly. You may also catch sentence level mistakes by reading your paper aloud. Generally, there are three stages in the writing process. One, pre preparing before drafting. Thinking, brainstorming, praying, writing, researching, outlining, sketching, and so on. Something called pre-writing to writing the draft. Three, revising and editing. Then what's the difference between revising and editing? The revision is, revision is a, a draft usually involves significant changes, including the following, making organization changes like the ordering of paragraphs, Clarifying the thesis or adjustment between the thesis and the supporting point and that follows. Cutting material that is unnecessary or irrelevant. Adding new point to strengthen or clarify the presentation. Editing and the proofreading are the last steps following revision. Correcting a sentence early or may not be the best use of your time since you may cut the sentence entirely. They are important final parts of the writing process. But they should not be confused with revision itself. Editing and pro reading a draft involves these steps. Careful spell checking. This includes checking the spelling of them. Attention to sentence level issues. Be especially attentive to sentence boundaries, subject web agreement. Remember to get started on a writing assignment earlier so that you complete the first draft well before the due date, allowing your needed time for journal revision and careful editing. Sometimes you may ask yourself, what if I need help with writing? Writing is a hard work. Most colleges provide resources that can help you form the early stage of an assignment through to the completion of an essay. Most students are encouraged or required to enroll in a writing class in their first term, and it's a good idea for everyone. Use everything you learn there about drafting and revising in all your sources. 1. Tutoring service. Most colleges have a tutoring service that fo focus primarily on student writers. Look up and visit your tutoring center earlier in the term of tutoring what service is offered to teaching assistants and instructors. In a large class, you may have both a course instructor and a teaching assistant. Seek help from either or both as you draft your essay. Some instructors offer only limited help, but even a brief response 
to a drafted introduction or to a question can be valuable. 3. Writing websites and writing handbooks. Mainly writing websites and handbooks can help you along every step of the way, especially in the last stage of your work. You will find lessons on style as well as information about language, conventions, and correction. Plagiarize and how to avoid. Plagiarize is the unacknowledged use of material from a source and the most observable. Plagiarize involves using someone else's words and ideas as if they were your own. But uh, plagiarism is not always so simple. Notice that your definition of plagiarism <coughs> involves words and ideas. Let's break and let down a little further. First word. Copying the words of another is clearly wrong. If you use another's words, those words must be in quotation marks. And you must tell your reader where those words came from, but it is not enough to make a few surface changes in wording to ideas. Ideas are also a form of intellectual property to help you sort out what ideas need to be cited and what, what not think about these principles. One command knowledge. This is no lead to Cited command knowledge. Command knowledge does not mean knowledge everyone has. It means knowledge that everyone can easily assess distinct contributions. One that lead to cited ideas that are distinct contributions. A distinct contributions need not be a discovery from the work of one person. It need only be an insight that is low commonly expression and the law universally agree up a point. Three, these putable figures. Always remember that numbers are only as good as the sources they, can, they come from. If your instructor do not, does not know the source you use, you will not get much credit for the information you have collected. Everything said previously about using sources apply to all forms of sources. You must evaluate all sources in the same way and cite them as necessary. Form of citation. You, sh you should generally check with your instructors about their preferred form of citation when you write papers for short courses. No one standard is used in all academic papers. You can learn about the three major form of all styles used in most any college writing handbooks and on many websites for college writers. 1. MLA, the Modern Language Association System of Citation, is widely used but is most commonly adopted in humanities courses, particularly literature courses. 2. APA, the American the Psychological Association system of citation is most common in the social science. 3. The Chisako manual of style is widely used but perhaps most commonly in historic sources. Many college departments have their own style guides, which may be based on one of the above. Your instructor should refer you to his or her preferred guide. But be sure to ask if you have no been given expression. Okay. Deliver. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, when you reverse check the check the assignments, do you? Paper. Does your paper do what it's supposed to do? Check the title. Does it clearly identify the overall topic or position? Check the introduction. 
does it set the stage and uh, establish the purpose? Pupils, check each paragraph. Embody, does it begin in with the translation from the president? Check organization, does it make sense why each topic precise the or following other? Check the, check the development, is each topic fully explained? Explained, detailed, supposed, and uh, ex explained. Check the conclusion. Does it restart the sense and broken ideal to get ideas together? When your ideas read the paper aloud, listen for flow and the nature word style. Check check for lapse into slow clock clock limbs on no standard English person check check certain level grammar and uh, punctuation pay special attention to past writing problem when everything seems done run the spell checker again and do a final proofread check physical Layout and uh, machines again. Introduct instru instructors' expectation. Title page. France the American and notes. Okay, that's my part. Uh, everything about college writing so far in this chapter applies in most college writing assignments. Some particular situations, however, de deserve special attention. These include writing in class IC, group writing projects, and writing in an online course. First, writing in class IC. You might well think the whole writing process goes out the window when you have to write an in-class IC. That's because you don't have much time to spend on the IC. You don't have the opportunity to think feedback at any stage along the way. And I will I will introduce you some guidelines. First, make for writing in class by making writing a regular part of your study routine. Students who regular who write down their response to reading throughout the term have a huge advantage over students who think they can stand by just reading the material clearly. Writing is a, is a way to build better writing, as well as a great way to study and think about the course, course material. Don't wait until the exam provides to start writing about things you have been studying throughout the term. Second, Read the exam report or assignments very carefully before you begin to respond. Note, note keyword in exam pr promote. For example, if an exam assignment asks for an argument, be sure to strategize your essay as, a, as an argument. Also, look for ways the instructor has limited the scope of your response. Focus on what your what is uh, highlighted in the exam question itself? Joe, Joe's notes and uh, secret out a list of key points you want to cover before you jump into writing. If you have time, you might even draft an opening paragraph on a piece of cigarette paper before committing yourself to a particular response. Too often, students begin writing before they have thought about the whole task before them. When that happens, you might find that you can't develop yourself, your idea as fully as, as you want. Students who take the time to plan act, actually write longer in class essay <clears throat> than those who began writing their answer right after they have read the assignment. 
take as much as fourth of the total exam period to plan. Then keep track of the time. Some instructors sign the passing of time during the exam period, but do not count on that will help. Well, you shouldn't comp compulsively check the time every minute or two. Look at your watch now and then. Then, save a few minutes at the end of the section of quick review of what you have written and for making small change your notes necessarily. The special one is handwriting. College instructors sometimes assign group group with project. The term of assignment will greatly. Sometimes the instructors specific rules for each member of the group, but often it's part of the group's task to define everyone's role. Follow these guidelines. First, get off to an early start and meet regularly through the process. Second, sort out, sort out your rules as soon as you can. You might de divide the work in sections and then meet to put those sections together, but you might also think more in terms of specific strengths and interests each of you bring to the project. For example, if one group member is an experienced research, that person might gather an anointed material for the assignment. You might also assign tasks and relate to the stage of the writing process. For example, one person for one meeting might consign a series of questions or a list of points to be addressed. To start a discussion about the possible direction for the first draft, another student might take a first pass at shopping the group's ideas in a rough draft, and so on. Remember that whatever you do, you cannot like keep each person's work specific from the work of others. There will be and probably should be significant overlap if you are to eventually put together a successful project. The most important one is be a good citizen. If you are assigned a group project, you should want to be an active part of the group's work. Never try to read. <coughs> Sorry. Never try to read on the skills of other or let others do more than their fair share. Don't lack any lack of confidence you may feel as. A writer keep you from doing your share. One of the great things about a group project is that you can learn from others. Another great thing is that you will learn more about your own strengths and that other value. Complete a draft early so that you can collectively review, revise, and finally edit together. Third, the online writing in online course. Online instructor is becoming more and more common. All the principles discussed in th in this chapter apply also in online writing, and many aspects are even more important in an online course. In most online courses, almost everything depends on writing communication. Discussion is generally writing rather than spoken. Question and clarification take sharp in writing, and feedback is given in writing. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Uh, this is the last part. The chapter takeaways. Uh, this is the conclusion of this chapter, and give you some tips about the writing. 
And the first successful writer in all contexts think of writing as a process, a means to learn, and a social a social act. And the first, uh, the first tip is about paying close attention to the terms of the assignment is essential for understanding the writing approach the instructor expects and for shaping the essay. And second, using the writing process maximizes the mental process involved in thinking and writing. Take the time to explore pre-written strategy before drafting an essay in order to discover your ideas and how best to shape and communicate them. And the third is avoid the temptation after writing, uh, after writing a draft to consider the essay down. Revision is almost always needed, involving more significant changes than just quick corrections and edit editing. And first, gradually our colleagues writing builds on the ideas of others. This is a significant part of the education I experience. In your writing, be sure you always make it clear in your phrasing and use the citation which ideas are your own or common knowledge and which come from other sources. Colleague writing extends throughout the circulum from your first writing class through to your last term, including writing in class on examination, group projects, and online courses. Through all this great variety of writing, however, the main principle of effective writing remains constant. Work to develop your colleague writing skills to, at this early stage, and you will be well served throughout your education and into your career thereafter. That's all. Thank you. Uh, this might be a good time to talk about our writing in this class. Be sure you should you should be doing that every week. Um, basically, you're going to be handing in your journal, and unlike what I was talking about in this chapter, there isn't a it's not really a academic paper per se, being self-reflective, um, you know, I would expect you to do some self-editing and so forth. I mean, you're not just handing a bunch of garbage. I Mainly, I need to be able to, to understand what you're writing, um, but I'm not as concerned about, I'm not as concerned about writing style as I'm concerned about whether you're taking the time to reflect on what you're learning. That's the whole point of, uh, uh, that we talked about in the very first week, second week, third week, whatever, um, is that self-reflective means what does this mean to me, in essence? What is this, what are the things that we're learning in class? Why are they relevant to me? And so that's what I'm hoping to see from you is, uh, uh, as you hand in your self-reflective journal, is uh, what, you know, each week by week, what, what did we learn this week that that hit home, that I can apply in my life, that uh, was important to me for some reason. So it's a little bit different than the sort of writing that they've talked about in this chapter. Not nearly as formal, uh, not nearly as, um, you know, like I say, the writing style. You don't have a specific writing style assigned. Um, certainly there's no, uh, well, there's no requirement to have any regular references, although if you're Quoting something, obviously you need to put quote marks on it. And tell tell me tell me where where you got it from, but uh, something like that. But uh, but there's not it's not a formal academic paper per se. This is to tell me what you learned and what had meaning to you. And the what I the reflection part is, did you really give it some thought? You know, did you really think about? what we were learning, and did you come up with ways in your life that you could apply them and so forth. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm not looking for a research paper. That never, you know, from the very start I told you, no, not a research paper. We're talking about self-reflection. What's it mean to me? Um, and how can I apply it in my life? So it's more, it's more journal. 
and that is what it is. It's a journal uh, about uh, what you learned week, week to week uh, that had meaning to you. And that's what I expect to see from you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to another video. We've got a little bit of time. Um, so I'm going to go and uh, we've, we've uh, in the last uh, week, we got to know Mark Andreessen a little bit. If you uh, uh, watched that video of Christensen and Andreessen uh, discussing some key issues, I found it quite interesting myself. Uh, uh, I, you know, I, I very much appreciate Clayton Christensen's revolutionary ideas on business. But then to see it from uh, kind of from the perspective of somebody else uh, who clearly is influenced by Christensen, he, he, he does, as he mentioned, is I think in his in that uh, section that it's kind of the like you're jumping from I can't remember exactly what he compared to kind of like you're jumping from uh, uh, you know a, a, to a whole new way of looking at things. You're you're you're, you're you've totally He's totally revolutionized how you look at business. Um, and so, um, you know, it's kind of like jumping from algebra to calculus sort of thing, I think is what, what he, he said. Is that, you know, you, had, you thought you understood things when you were learning algebra, but now you learn cal calculus and you realize, uh, I didn't know very much before. Uh, I didn't get it. So it was interesting to see it through uh, Andreessen's eyes as uh, they were discussing, going back and forth and discussing, uh, you know, the, the things going on in Silicon Valley. Uh, as we get down into this in this week's videos, um, besides the one that that we already watched in class, the rest are again people from Silicon Valley. Uh, Mark Andreessen again, uh, top ten rules for success. Now, he didn't actually, you know, speak from one to ten. He the uh, Kind of like in that last one, uh, somebody went through and edited all the different YouTube videos he could find from Mark Andreessen and came up with the top ten rules for him. Um, and same with, uh, um, I guess not in this one, um, kind of the same thing in Lessons of Steve Jobs um, with Guy Kawasaki. Guy Kawasaki is, is a very good presenter, but he's, uh, he was also, he worked for, <clears throat> with Steve Jobs twice, actually, early in his career and then later on as well. So he, he reflects a lot of the Steve Jobs ideas um, and uh, does it uh, quite articulately. He's a pretty smart guy. When we get down, oh yeah, there are some, here's the one. Ben Horowitz is, uh, is Mark Andreessen's partner in their investment firm, and so he, he sees things a, a little bit differently uh, than uh, than Mark Andreessen does, but uh, they they work together. They're partners, so so they they correlate with each other uh, quite a bit. So uh, everybody on this list, uh, except uh, the the first one, you know, we're not Silicon Valley people, and uh, everybody else is. So uh, you're kind of getting the the perspective from. You know, from a, a real industry, uh, like I say, totally focused in Silicon Valley, totally technology related. Uh, but, well, yes, but no. I mean, they all work in a technology field, but they're looking at it from, uh, in fact, one of them, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's Andreessen's partner, uh, Horowitz, in his 10 rules, talks about how it kind of goes out of the box and, and, suggests that the technology is not the important part for success. That's the environment you work in, and that's the field you're, you're trying to excel in, the, the ideas you're, you're trying to come up with to how to apply the technology. But uh, other skills, like people skills, are end up being more important. Communication skills end up being more important for your success. Um, so I think uh, I'm going to... Maybe jump, uh, look at the timing here. Um, don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to, we'll go down to, uh, uh, yeah, this one is a little different. This, uh, 
let's go down to this uh, Giovanni Carrazza video. He's different. Let me just uh, add just a couple of words to that. Uh, I know we're out, uh, over time again, um, but what you when you start thinking outside the box, <clears throat> it's kind of like brainstorming uh, and. In the same way as Covey and, and his associates have talked about brainstorming and finding, um, let me see, I'm clear off the top here in the, my video, but that's okay. Um, and brainstorming, you're trying to get one of the powers of brainstorming, and this actually substantiates it, is that you're getting automatically uh, divergent thinking. By the very fact that there's multiple people adding their ideas, you automatically have divergent thinking. Uh, one of the important things, again, is to make sure it's not a hostile environment because in many, many cases, people think, why can't something be done rather than how can something be done? If you go into a brainstorming se session and the focus is how can something be done and you eliminate the why can't it be done, that also creates divergent thinking. Uh, bureaucrats and people like that are specialists in why things can't be done and they squelch a lot of good ideas. Uh, it's one reason why you need to try to set up a new atmosphere in a company or an organization to squelch bureaucracy, <laughs> to squelch the idea that status quo is what we are comfortable with. We want only the status quo. Nobody talked to us about anything but the status quo. Um, no new ideas, thank you. Um, that's kind of the idea of a, of, a, of a bureaucracy. They want to be efficient, not effective. They want to get their job done. They want rules. They want systems. And they don't want anybody fouling things up. Well, you don't want an organization like that. You have to try to foul up the bureaucracy if you can uh, so that your organization can work better. But meanwhile, within the brainstorming, you have to kill that idea altogether. You have to kill any, any approach to in brainstorming of why this can't be done, at least until you get far enough to where it becomes really obvious to everybody if it can't be done. But you're mostly thinking, how can it be done? How can it be done? So his thinking about the doing a TEDx in a stadium, how can it be done? Not why it can't be done. Now at some point you have to make a vote or whatever and look at a lot of different ideas and it may, they may vote against trying to do a TEDx in a stadium. Because it, it becomes kind of as you talk about it and just talk about it in positive ways, it still becomes obvious it, it's, it's going to be really hard to do and get the effect you want. Um, the, the other thing, though, then, in, in divergent thinking, as far as going internal now, one of my favorite things is internal brainstorming. You ever talk to yourself? You ever, you're thinking about the day, and part of you says something, and something else, your brain says something else? Uh, I talk to myself all the time. And I don't know how you do that. I, mean, I don't know really the, the mental makeup of our being that we can talk to ourselves. And one guy, one person inside my brain says something, and somebody else in my side of my brain says something else, and they're holding on a conversation in here. But it does kind of seem like that, like there's, like we're all kind of split personalities a little bit, and there's people inside our brain that we can kind of hold on a con hold a conversation between ourselves, um, and and so you can literally brainstorm internally, and set up the same parameters. Uh, of divergent thinking as he was talking about and set it up how okay here's the problem how could we do things differently you know here is the problem now let's figure out how we could do things differently and make it work how could we do a university without any buildings you know the idea of online education but how do we do it effectively you have to think of all the the challenges that would come about if you did away with all the buildings um, or if you do need one building, uh, you kind of may, may look at that. We have one building for some meetings, but all the other buildings go. No more, no, you know, no more, or very few classes. When do we have a class? When don't we have a, a real class? Um, how do we, how does that look like? And, you know, so forth. How do we organize that? 
How do people feel comfortable with it? How do they get proper feedback? Stuff like that. Well, whatever the problem is, you can start brainstorming it. It helps, and I think there's one reason, um, I forget his name, the billionaire that, that came on campus a, a couple of months ago. Uh, I mentioned, I may have mentioned to you, anyway, he, he reads, I think he said he goes through about 10 books a month. He doesn't really read them, he skims them for important ideas. And so 10 books a month, he skims those books, reads the chapter heads, reads enough, he sees something interesting, he reads a little bit. So what's he doing? He's basically providing himself divergent thinking. He's suddenly looking, looking through other people's eyes uh, for 10 people who have written popular books that, that he's interested in that, that might change the way he does his work or whatever. And so he's reading these books, looking at these different ideas, and he doesn't go in great detail. He doesn't take the time to. He's just taking their best ideas. Uh, so it's kind of like brainstorming. He's bringing in the divergent ideas that he didn't have before and, and, and then thinking about how can I apply this idea? How can I apply that? In other words, he's doing self-reflection, which is what I've asked you to do with your writing. He's now looking for lots of ideas, self-reflecting. How are these applicable to us? How can we use them? Not why we don't use them, why can't we use them, but how could we use them? Would it be the applicable in, in my life, in our organizational life or whatever? Uh, so there's different ways of doing it, but you need those divergent ideas and whether you can drum them up in your own mind, you know, how to apply ideas from one part of your life and another part of your life or whatever, whether you have to skim books, uh, whether uh, you uh, are doing ex external brainstorming. One way I think I mentioned before is uh, also tapping into your right brain. Uh, the idea of, uh, you know, the head of the Business Consultants of America shared this idea. I may have mentioned already that he, he literally, before he goes to bed at night, he studies, he's a business consultant, so he, he works for lots of different companies. And so once he's learned what their problems are, then he programmed his brain and, you know, he, he kind of looking at how to solve problems for that company. He, go, when he goes to bed, he tells, he orders his brain, he programs his brain, figure out a solution for this, figure it out, figure, you know, figure out this, you know, this is the problem, we know what the problems are, we need to solve this problem, figure out and tell me what the problem, what the solution is. And he tells his brain to do that and then he goes to sleep. He wakes up with ideas. Um, our brain doesn't sleep. In fact, our, some of our most creative time is our, it was when we're sleeping. And so if you can program your brain, the idea is that's when you go right brain. Uh, no matter how left brain you are, you're right brain when you sleep. And you're very creative, uh, which is why we dream. Um, and dreaming is important, by the way. They, they've done experiments where they have stopped people from dreaming. They let them sleep, but they don't let them dream. So every time they start to dream, they can tell by, what was it, EKG or whatever, uh, they, can, they, they can see somebody starting to dream they wake them up. Then they let them go to sleep again. And then they start to dream again, they wake them up. Then they let them go to sleep again. So they may get a full eight hours of sleep, but when they were doing this experiment, after uh, a couple of days, people were starting to hallucinate. And they, they had to stop the experiment uh, because people needed that dream time. They have to dream. We have to dream. Uh, we have to let our right brain be creative. So... That guy, the, uh, the uh, president of the Association of Business Consultants in America, just taps into that. He programs his brain, orders his brain to solve his problems while he's sleeping, and he just goes to sleep, lets his right brain go to work. Okay, well, anyway, thank you, and uh, 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 it may not, I haven't put these up on, on the internet yet, and I'm not sure I'll put all of them up, uh, but uh, in fact, this isn't even, yeah. Anyway, so um, I'll figure out the timing of it. And uh, but be sure to watch them. Be sure to do your self-reflection, and uh, we'll see you next week.